Walt Disney was one of the greatest innovators of 20th century filmmaking. Whenever his artists faced a technical challenge or attempted something that had never been done before, Walt and his engineers invented a solution, like the multi-plane camera in the 1930s for creating depth and three-dimensional effects. Or they would adapt existing technology to their own needs, like the Xerox process in the 1960s, which simplified the ink and paint stages of production. But as important as these technical innovations were, Disney also pioneered new ways to refine the storytelling of his films. He was the first to develop his stories through storyboards. One of his least known innovations outside the world of animation was the sweat box. Sweat box got its name from the original small projection rooms in the Hyperion studio, where Walt Disney and his animators and directors could review animated footage dailies or story reels on a film in production. These little rooms didn't have air conditioning, so that was one reason they were called sweat boxes. There was another reason, and that was that Walt was looking at your work and applying his critical eye. The story was developed on storyboards and pinned up in sequence. Once the storyboard was approved, each individual sketch would be removed from the board and photographed. When Disney first started cutting together story reels, he used to shoot them on a Leica camera. And so the running story reel became known as a Leica reel. They might have a rough soundtrack of, of uh, music or actors' voices. Sometimes the story guys might do the voices themselves. And Walt and his animators and directors would sit in the sweat box and watch the movie. Now, the movie is not a actually moving motion picture. It's just a series of still drawings in sequence. But you still get a sense of the pace of the film. Morning, fellas. Hi, Walt. Hey, Walt. I can only imagine what it must have been like for the lights to go down, the projector beam to come up, know that Walt is sitting in the front row with the one eyebrow arched. <laughs> and, and looking at your scenes rolling by. What was so smart about so many things back then, he had a stenographer take notes at those sweat box sessions. The sweat box notes they still exist today. We can see what Walt was saying and what the animator said back to him, and it's fascinating to actually be able to relive that history. Let's roll sequence 10.1. Outside is an ocean full of fish, and here we sit starving, starving to death. Oh, a miracle! <laughs> oh, mirages, hallucinations, what next? Let's stop a minute. Well, boys, what do you think? I sure like that rope coming down. Well, that works good. You don't think we should have the rope dissolve into sausages? Uh, they are right there, aren't they? We cut, and it's sausages. He picks them up, and it's immediately rope. I like the rope coming down, hitting him on the head. <laughs> Walt was a great story editor. Looking at the filmed storyboards set to the track, Walt could make very, very smart comments about uh, timing, about sections of story that don't work. Where Geppetto points his finger, how about a bigger shot? Do you think so? It's a wrist and hand. You want to see the kitten with the finger right on him. You know it's Geppetto. You want to be with the kitten. Walt, he was a uh, perfectionist, and he would analyze and assess every action. He would find a way to improve it until it was perfect in his mind. He had very particular ideas, and he had no problem with making sure that people knew what he wanted. Walt was very, very precise when he looked at pencil tests and he would make notes and people would be kind of quaking in their boots. Get Pinocchio always pushing through that water. It gives a nice effect. Whenever he relaxes from this, he floats up there. He floats up, the rock stops him, and then there is a little rebound. When he turns around, Pinocchio would sort of pull himself in the water. All our walking should be slow motion. He's got a weight behind him, and there is the water also holding him back. A lot of time, Walt would use it to kind of spur people to the next level. I remember this story about Bill Tightla. He'd look at it and he'd go, 
Well, for anybody else, that's a good enough scene. But for Bill Teitler, I don't know. <laughs> and, of course, Bill would walk away crushed and try even harder, you know, to make it a great scene that Walt would like. I recall being in, in a session where Walt Disney was grilling his director on, on why did that happen and why did you do this and, and why didn't you do that? Uh, Walt uh, had certain things he expected to see and if he didn't see it, then he was going to ask why not? And so you better have an answer ready. And can't please everybody. The sweat box process was the heart of refining every scene in the film. When you look at Pinocchio, uh, those scenes are not animated so much as they are reanimated. There's nothing that got to the screen exactly as it was done the first time. Everything would be watched with a very, very critical eye by Walt. Walt's criticisms during the sweat box sessions were sometimes brutal. They almost always were right on the money, and I think everybody who was with Walt in those sessions would be further inspired to reach new heights. Sweat boxing still works. It, it's still how we build a film, how we create a film. It's just part of that uh, marvelous, magical process of animation.